This is the final word for all that cricket fueled by Kookaburra Cricket. I'm Adam Collins, and this week on the segment, we have a very special guest, Felix White of the Maccabees. The Maccabees are a band of had prolific success, well over a decade, touring around the world, number one smash hit albums and the, and the like. And um, Felix and his band have decided to, to call it a day. And, and in doing so, um, he, he stumbled upon a bit of a gem. He's written this epic feature for all that cricket about cricketers after they've stopped doing the game professionally. And he, he drew some parallels from his own life and the transition he was going through, and he came up with something very special. Can you can you tell us a little bit about the origins of this piece in All That Cricket this month? Yeah, well, as you say, Adam, when uh, we decided to call it a day last year, we are about to do our farewell shows, but um, we've been playing for 14 years on the road and stuff like that, been our entire lives till then. And the first person I thought of was Carl Hogg, the Lancashire fast bowler, because I'd met him a year previously when we were sound checking in a venue in Newcastle, and it was just a kind of a roughly familiar figure in the distance, loading gear in and out of a, a venue. And as he got closer, I realised it was <laughs> Kyle Hogg, who had been the player of the season the year before at Lancashire, who'd won the county championship. And as we got talking, he told me that his back had gone and his mum had died in a week period and upon which his whole world had changed, his sense of identity, everything. And I was really struck with the enthusiasm with which he was moving into his new life. So when my band came to an end, I thought, with All Out Cricket, who I've written for a few times before, I thought there'd just be a story in it. So we went to Manchester where he was doing a gig, he's now a very successful rep, and um, and interviewed him. And then it kind of snowballed into a piece about what do many cricketers do from all walks of life after they retire from the game. And it, we spoke to people like Freddie and Brett Lee and Mark Butcher and Jack Russell, like propping in cricketers, and then county players that have gone on to careers outside the game, like Alex Morris, who's the firefighter, Saj Mahmood starting the clothing range, David Painter's built a shoe, um, and it goes on and on. Yeah, th there is a huge contrast. And what you talked about the international players, I asked him a very simple question, like, what are you doing now? Yeah. And it's, it's weird when you think about these guys. They've been on TV, they've been on, you know, the pub, you're watching them and yeah. doing, doing their thing, watching them in front of 30,000 people. Then they're not doing what they've done for their entire formative years. And let's start with Freddie Flintoff because mm. that was particularly insightful. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they become kind of mythical in, in, in your mind and you don't really engage with the human aspect of what they go through internally and inside that and when they're not um, in pu the public situation. But Freddie was very, very honest. And one of the things he said to me was that he still dreams about playing cricket and he doesn't feel like he'll ever find something that's going to replace that and it's been an exercise since in um, coming to terms with the fact that um, you know he's never going to feel the same way about anything else he did playing for Lancashire in England he actually said <laughs> in a bid to re replace it he tried to become a WWF wrestler <laughs> <laughs> and they offered him <laughs> a job to be in Royal Rumbles and stuff which <laughs> is like very unfeasible for a cricket but for Freddie he's somehow is actually realistic <laughs> yeah, and then I think Mark Butcher for mine was perhaps the most uh, the most gripping read uh, for what you learn about him and, and the sort of mindset he needed to get into to perform and, and how abrupt it all ended for him. Yeah, Mark, I'd um, I'd watch Mark from being a very young kid falling in love with cricket. He was batting for England at the time, so he's always been a very formative cricketer from the beginning for me. But he said to me that he was relieved when he retired because he felt like in order to maintain himself at that level he had to essentially create a character who was incredibly selfish and wasn't going to budge for anyone and that kind of manifested itself outside of his cricketing life as well so by the time his career had come to a close he was actually pretty relieved that he didn't have to play that role anymore and he could just take a deep breath and sort of get back into the uh, get down to earth essentially um so that's an interesting thing yeah and, and Alex Morris, who, who's gone on to become a firefighter, I love the parallels between his new life and his old life. Yeah, well, Alex um, said that he very consciously decided that the most similar thing he could do to playing cricket would be a fireman because you're waiting around drinking tea for long periods of time. Uh, everyone's got a specific role within that thing. You then get catapulted into a action for a very short period of time but it's very intense and then you go back to waiting around again <laughs> which is not dissimilar actually to being in a band as well um but he really still loved cricket and that was a nice thing because a lot of the fast bowlers i spoke to and some of them said 
quite honestly, like, I just fell out of love with the game. We play it too much and the work like my body went through and I started, you know, they begin to resent it. And he said, I still love cricket dearly, but as a fireman with his two kids, he thinks his life's fantastic now, which is a very heartening thing. Turning it back onto you, Felix, after 14 years of significant success, what you've been defined by for so long, 32 years old now, moving into another phase of your life. What have you learned about your own transition through talking to these cricketers in such great depth over the last six months? Well, it was, yeah, it was that kind of accidental uh, sense of catharsis to it going through it and, and realising that there's a life beyond the only thing you've you've known really and I think one interesting thing is a lot of the cricketers expressed including Brett Lee actually he said um, he felt that he was more than a fast bowler and that sounds like a mad thing to say because you dream of being a guy like Brett Lee but he felt like maybe there's more dimensions to his life than just being that you know so I kind of took that as a as a heartening thing to move into um, but I think you know my friends and my family are probably a bit miffed that I wasn't talking about it to them, but I was running around the country talking to cricketers <laughs> about like, what I was going to do next. Now, beyond being a musician, obviously, you're a very learned student of the game of cricket, so I'd be remiss of me not to take this opportunity to ask you how you think your beloved England will go in the Champions Trophy. They're going favourites. It's a tournament they've never won before. Do you think they can do it on home soil or, or Australia and India are going to come over the top? Well, it's a, it is a, it's a disorientating thing going into a tournament as, as favourites, but I think rightly so. I mean, this is the best England one day team ever which is a huge contrast to a few years ago um, Johnny Best I might not even get in a team mm. and he'd get in any other team in the top five in the world so that goes to show how strong we are I think you, you never know we messed up the uh, Champions Trophy a few years ago in India in the final where we should have won it so you don't and we've never won this tournament so you don't know how it's going to turn out but we've got as good a chance as ever and last time you came to watch England play in a tournament, it was, it was in Australia and it, it didn't really work out so well. You, you, you flew to Australia to watch England play and they bundled out before you got to see them play in a single match. Um, are you inspired to come back to Australia for the Ashes this summer potentially? Uh, yeah, well, that is true. I was flying out to Australia by the time the England team were flying back home, which was <laughs> accidental. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to come, hopefully, well, if Australia got a team, I'll be at the Ashes for sure. Tapping into a bit of controversy there on the, way, the door. Um, 18,000 words in this month's All Out Cricket. It's been described as one of the best things to ever appear in a cricket magazine. And having read it, um, I certainly endorse that sentiment. Felix White from the Maccabees, thank you so much for joining us on the final word today for All Out Cricket and Kookaburra Cricket. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.